Um, scaling an object is taking something and making it bigger or smaller to benefit you in different ways. So if you had something really, really small, like DNA, right? In science, you look at DNA and you make a scale object of DNA. Maybe you made it with spaghetti and marshmallows or something. I forget what the teachers do in science. Or you see a picture of DNA. Like they have scaled that out. They've made something really small, way bigger, so you can actually look at it and know what's going on. We also do, I find, we scale more down. We take really big things and make them small. So for instance, maps. Right? Maps are scaled down objects. I couldn't ever represent an actual map that's the whole world because it would cover kilometers long. It wouldn't make sense. A globe right, is scaled down. You're never going to have a globe that's actually the size of the world. It's called scaling. There's two ways we do it. Okay, the first way is with ratios uh, where they give you a number and then another number. The second way is with a scale factor or percentage where they'll be like, we do 200% of that object. Right? They, they, they scale it up or scale it down. We're going to start off by talking about ratios. This is what I think you run into the most. Okay, So a scaled out ratio looks like this. You're going to get a number, and then you're going to get a colon, and then you're going to get another number. The first number tells you what the, like, the new one will be, or the image. So if you're making something, that first number is how big you're going to make it. So that's not the time? No. It looks like time, right? It looks like 130. Yeah. The second number represents the actual size of something. So when I look at this, what it means is that I'm going to have one for every actual 30 that exists. And there's no units there, but if they put units on it and say one centimeter for every 30 centimeters, that's how it would work. So if something was 30 centimeters long, I would now only draw it one centimeter long. I'd make it a lot smaller. We'll look at some examples because I think that's probably the best way to do scaling. So when we look at this and it says, what does the scale 1 to 15 mean? What it means Small. is that for every... 15 the object is we do an image oh that's not how you spell image we do an image of one so if something was 15 kilometers long now it's going to be one kilometer long Is this getting bigger or smaller? <coughs> yeah, right? That, that's going to be smaller. Assuming that they're the same units, right, which they are. So that means I'm taking something and I'm shrinking it down to a smaller size. So every 15 centimeters. Or yeah. And, and like... Like you said, you see models everything. Model cars, right? Like, you know how you take a, an actual car and then you have like a little tiny model version of it? That's what they're doing. They're taking, okay, every 15 centimeters of an actual car, I'm going to shrink it down to one centimeter. And we do that for the whole car. So now the car is a scaled out model. So the actual tires are the right size for that model car because it's been scaled at the same rate. The second one, it says, what does the scale three to two mean? So, yeah, that would be getting bigger. That would mean that for every two, the object is through. Oh, for every two, the object is. We do an image. Of three. If you think about this, if you had every two centimeters, now you're going to make it three centimeters. And that's what you're doing. You're taking the second number and you're turning it into the first one. And it, this object would get bigger, right? Assuming they're the same units. Typically for that, like, I don't know, science is where I see a lot of the getting bigger. 
when we're talking about very microscopic things, right, that you can't possibly see, they scale it out to be bigger so that it looks larger. Awesome. You'll also see it when you're like building things. So I don't know. Some random you build. I built a playset this summer. So when you get a playset, right, and there's all those little screws and stuff, and they'll take an image of that screw and then they'll show you a bigger picture of it. And they'll be like, this is how you need to put the screw together, right? You need your nut and then your lock wash and then your regular washer. But they'll show you a bigger picture than the actual screw is. And that's an image, a scaled out image. They've made it larger. Let's try a couple questions. So. What's 10 times 15? Yeah. Yep. So if we look at this first one, it says the picture of a lion has been drawn using a scale of 1 to 50. That means for every 50 that the thing actually was, now it's only 1. So what does a scale of 1 to 50 mean? And this is centimeters. It should have said that, but it doesn't. So I'm going to put centimeters. For every... 50 centimeters the lion is, we draw one centimeter. Yeah. So in this case, we're taking something big, right, the lion, and we're making it smaller so that it can fit in our picture. So now that you have the picture, of this lion, and it says this lion is 2.5 centimeters long, the question is, what is the actual size of the lion? So how can I convert from this ratio up here into really calculating what things should be? Yeah. Um, the way we do this is I like to convert those numbers different ways. Um, because it's 1 to 50, it's kind of a nice simple one. It means for every one of these, it should have been 50. So if I go 2.5, that's what it is, multiply it by what it should have been, which is 50. And that'll tell you that this thing should have been 125 centimeters. Maybe it's a baby line. <coughs> so this line's actually 125 centimeters long. We're going to say it's a baby line. I'm not very long for a lion. Right? I took that number and then I multiplied it to be what it, what it should. Wait. Um, yep. Um, I don't want to bring this in right now. It's okay. Think but for a second. Like, so every centimeter the line is 50 centimeters. Every 50 centimeters the line is, we drew one centimeter. Yeah. So, so for instance, like. 2.5. So now we have. Two and a half yep. centimeters. So that isn't that. So you can think about it if you're looking at this 2.5. Yeah. I'm going to break this down actually a little bit. I'm going to zoom in on this line. So we have 50 to 1, right? Yeah. So if I'm looking at this line over here. So like, just go like the first <laughs> centimeter, say that's like one centimeter right there. Oh, it would be a no mind. That would actually be 50 in real life. Yeah. Then there'd be another one more centimeter for another 50. And then there'd be a 0.5 of a centimeter, which would be the 25. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right? So one centimeter is 50. Yeah. Okay. And the way we do that quickly so that you're not always having to, like, break it down one at a time, especially yeah. with bigger numbers, can be a nightmare. That's what I was thinking. That's why I just do multiplication. Awesome. Um, honestly, I think the best place to see this stuff is on maps. Right? Like that's where I see this stuff all the time. Typically on a map, if you look on the bottom right hand corner of a map, it'll tell you the ratio or the, the scale ratio. You'll see it in the bottom right corner. It'll be like one to 25 and it's usually one centimeters, 25 kilometers. Right? They're scaling it for you. On your phone, when you look it up, it usually will say it somewhere on the phone too. Um, it'll show you, it'll be like this. I don't have it here on my picture because I couldn't do the, couldn't get the scale to go in a nice spot. But on your picture, they'll do this. Right at the bottom, it's like this, yeah. 
And then they'll say like five kilometers. And what they're telling you is that on your map, this long is five kilometers. I was going to say on top or something or somewhere along the side. Of it's it's, it's always like hidden. It's one centimeter to five kilometers. Yeah, right? And that's their scale ratio. But that's hard because your person is like this big. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. like your, your human is always massive or like yeah. the little arrow. It is massive. But if you look on your maps ever and you're just trying to figure out how far something is, that's how you can do it by looking at the bottom of the map and be like, oh, okay, they gave me something. And on your phone, it actually adjusts. So as you're zooming in and out, the scale adjusts. So it's kind of cool to be like, how far is something? If you look in the bottom right hand corner of your phone, it'll, it'll change. I always find it interesting like talking to like my my fiance's sister lives in Dubai and Saudi Arabia, so she's been all over the world. And I try to explain it to my kids about how far she is. So I show them on a map, and I'm like, oh, we're here and they're here. And they're like, oh, that's like, that's super close. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no, like every little line you see is actually like 100 kilometers away. Like she's really far away. And they can't fathom that idea of scaling. And that's what we're doing. That's all a map is. It's scaled down just tremendously. Yeah. I have a math question for you. Yeah, but if five times x equals one twenty six, and what's x? Well, that's a hard one because that's not a very good number. So you go one twenty six, then divide it by five. That'll tell you what x is. Oh, okay. Um, so we're looking at this. We got uh, according to Google Maps, the driving distance from Silver Lake to Red Deer is twenty three point nine. If the scale for the map above is one centimeter to two kilometers. That means you draw one centimeter for every two kilometers it actually is. How long is the driving distance on the map? <clears throat> so you could measure it, right? I mean, it'd be kind of a pain in your butt, but you could measure it to be like, oh, it's this many centimeters long. Or I could use this scale to help me out. The drive is 23.9 kilometers. I draw one centimeter for every two kilometers. 12 centimeters? Yeah, I mean rounding it, yeah, yeah. Now if I want to work backwards, what I'm doing here is I'm taking that, we're gonna round it to say 24, we'll make our lives easier. We're gonna take that 24 kilometers and we're gonna divide it by two. Because they gave me the kilometers this time. They gave me the actual. So if I want to turn it into what I drew, I'm now doing division. I'm dividing it by two to become 12. On the last question, On the last question, I did the opposite. I multiplied. But that's because they gave me the little amount and I was trying to work my way up to the second number. The language I should be using is image and actual. They gave me the image, I was trying to get to the actual. I had to multiply to get up because it was the one to 50. This time it's one to two. I'm going from actual to image, so I have to divide my way out. How many centimeters are in feet? 30. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, B, on another map that uses a scale of one centimeter to five kilometers, Mr. Kennedy measures the distance from Silver Lake to Airdrie to be 126 kilometers. Ah, this is why you asked me 126 divided by five. How far apart are Sylvan and Airdrie on the map? We have 126 kilometers. I want to turn that into centimeters. Every one centimeter is five kilometers. So that means I need to divide that by five. So 126, you guys are doing a good job. Divided by five kilometers, we'll turn it into centimeters for 25.2. I just used that very confusing. How'd you do it? Well, I asked you, was there five times X equals? But that's right, yeah, that, no, that's exactly what we're doing. You're just doing it at a higher level. And that's how you do it, though, right? You divide that five over. Like you're just doing algebra. Yeah. Mr. Kennedy, mm -hmm. have a yeah, I'm gonna hand out right after this question. If that's okay. Because this one's slightly different. Um, 
Number three, the ladybug is drawn using a scale of 10 to 1. It doesn't say the, the we're going to say that centimeters. What this means is you draw 10 centimeters for every one centimeter. That's what it means. So if it's actually one, you draw 10. You're now making this object bigger. Ladybug's not that big. That'd be terrifying. <laughs> so if you're looking at that picture, it says the ladybug measures seven centimeters long. How long is the actual ladybug? Ooh. Yeah, Miles. Seven centimeters. Seventy centimeters. So you did seven times ten Zero. to get seventy. You're close. You're close. Instead of multiplying, you want to divide this one, right? Because I'm going from bigger to making it smaller. So for every seven centimeters that thing is, I need to divide it by 10 to figure out the actual length of it, which would be 0 0.7 centimeters. It's actually seven. So they gave you the first number. That's what it actually is. I want to convert it to the, sorry, the picture is seven centimeters, so the image is seven centimeters. I want to convert it into the actual, so I divide by this to get to that number there, which is the actual size of it. The second part of the lesson is a little different. It's using something called uh, scale factors, which we're actually going to convert these ratios into scale factors, and it might make it easier for you. It makes it easier for me. So that's why I like to do it that way. Um, but before we start scale factors, I'm going to hand you a practice so you can practice for a little bit, see how you're doing on your scaling, and then we'll come back and do it together. It's another way of describing scaling things. Ratios are typically on maps and stuff like that. Scale factors are much more for drawings, I find. So a scale factor is just a number. So for instance, they can say the scale factor is two. And the way that they calculate that number is by taking the image. Oh, is this, is this like the mirror thing where you draw the same thing and draw the same object on the other side? Not quite. That's transformations, but that's close. So scale factor is the image or the new thing you're drawing divided by the original or the old thing that you have. And that'll give you something called, it'll pop back up, a scale factor. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it up here on board for you. Just let this internet reconnect. So when we're doing this, if you look at the triangle, it wants you to draw the scale image using a scale factor of 2. So move it by 2 at all. Not move it by 2, multiply it by 2. So scale factor is making things bigger or smaller. If your scale factor is larger than 1, it means you're getting bigger. The way that you do this is do one line at a time. So for instance, like this bottom line down here, if I count that line, it's one, two, three, four, five, it's six long. The new length will be six times two. So that means that new bottom line needs to be 12 units long. So I go to draw that bottom line. Yeah. And... Don't do diagonal lines. Okay, give me a sec. So I drew that bottom one by 12 because 6 times 2 is 12. Then I'm going to do the vertical line, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5 times the scale factor of 2 is 10. I'm going to draw that 10 high. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then for the diagonal lines, I can't count how long a diagonal line is because it's on a weird angle. So we don't scale out diagonal lines, we just connect them. So for this one, I know that if the top and the bottom were a scale of two, then that thing on its own will also scale out by two. So I just draw that connecting dot. To answer Morgan's question, he said, so if the scale factor is 3, do I just multiply by 3? Yeah. You just multiply by whatever the scale factor is, whether it's bigger or smaller. 
So we lay this next one. It says a scale factor of 1.5. So I'm going to take this spot on the bottom. 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to go 4 times 1.5 equals 6. And I'm going to draw a line of 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I'm going to do that for every single line. So from that line, I'm going to go up. This is 2. 2 times 1.5 would be 3. So now it's 3. Okay, 2 times 1.5 equals 3. And do that for every single horizontal or vertical line you see. My next one is right here. It's 2 to the left. 2 times 1.5 is, now it's 3 to the left. My next one goes up 2. 2 times 1.5 means it goes up 3. Next one is to the right 2. Go to the right 3 because that's times 1.5. And so on and so forth. Your object should look like this when you're all said and done. That's what your new object should look like. Yeah, Jordan. New object. Yes, sir. I don't know if you did scale factor grade six. Maybe you did. Yeah. It wasn't quite as complicated. It was like more simple. Braden. You do have questions um, that talk about percentages. So that's going to happen from time to time. When you get a percentage question, you need to turn it into a scale factor by dividing by 100%. So I'll turn it back to a regular number. So when it says 400%, what are we doing? So you have to divide that by 100% just to turn it back into a scale factor. So, no, four, like yeah, so 400 divided by 100 will give you the scale factor. So you're getting rid of that percentage. So it's 400 divided by 100. Yep. So it should just be... It should be 4. Yeah. Okay, when you get a question like this, the letter A has a lot of diagonals. Don't try to measure the diagonals. Draw all the horizontal and vertical lines first. What's 400%? Just wait. The letter A is a lot harder, so I want you guys to pay attention for the letter A. Boys, if you're working ahead, that's fine. Just be very quiet. When you're doing letters like this with diagonals, Try not to do the diagonals. Try to find the horizontal lines and do those instead. So, for instance, this bottom is 1. When I multiply it by the scale factor of 2, that bottom becomes 2. Then I have another bottom here. I can easily go 1 times 2 to figure where that line is, that it's 2 but I don't know where to put it on my diagram. So what you need to do is find this gap and also scale it by two. So if that gap right here, that's a gap of two, needs to become a gap of four. And then I can do the next bottom of that A. So this line here, after I go one, two, three, four over, is right there. So now I've got my two bottoms of my A. Notice that the gaps or the blanks also get scaled out. The next hard one is figuring out where this middle of the A starts. I can look at that and recognize, okay, it's about one long, but where does it start? It should start halfway in between, and then a distance of one up. And when you scale that, it becomes a distance of two up. So if I'm looking at this image, that bottom line should start here now. 
apologize for the quality of this image. It just kind of sucks. But you'll notice that it's in the middle of the two bottoms, and now the gap up has become two. And then I scale out that line. So if that line was approximately one in width, now I want to make it approximately two in width. So it should be like this now. And you can see I've started to kind of build this bottom of my A. To finish this off, i got to get the top of the A. To figure out where I'm going to put that top of the A, I'm going to count the gap from here to the top. And I'm going to scale it out. So if it was 1, 2, 3, from here to here, that means I need to go up. I get 6 now, because it's 3 times 2. So if I go up 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, this is the top of my A. And again, I scale out that size of the top to be 2. Yeah. Yeah. So now that I have the top, instead of measuring the diagonals and trying to scale them, I just connect the angles. So it looks like this. <laughs> I'm also missing my little inside, like the cutout of the A. Again, I'm going to look here as reference, and I'm going to go a gap of 1 should become a gap of 2. So if I start here and I go up 2, 1, 2, I now know where the bottom of my little hole is. And then make it twice as big. So like if it's now here, kind of hard because it's like just a little sliver, but I want to double it. So whatever you feel that width is, make it times two. So I would say that's like, I don't know, a quarter. I mean, I'm going to make it a half. I'm going to double the width of it. So that looks so like this. Covering the full square and then the half of both sides. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. The peak up here, again, I'm going to do the gap. So from here to there was about a half. If I double it, it should be up a full one. So I can make my little peak right about here. And now I've got my scaled out A. That is a heck of a lot harder than the regular shapes. Yes, sir. If you see, resend them back. Right. Thank you. So when you get those crazy shapes, look for gaps, scale the gaps as well, and then try to use reference points. There's two one uh, here. You'll notice that we use uh, fractions now. So if I wanted to scale something with fractions, I'll do the bottom line for you, and then you can try the rest of it. I'm going to count this bottom line. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. If I go 9 times 2 over 3, that'll tell me that I need to change my length of 9 into a length of six, right? I take my actual length, multiply it by the scale factor. So nine times two over three is six. If you're wondering what two over three is in your calculator, it's divide, right? So really I did nine times two divided by three to get my new length of six. And again, you don't want to do diagonals. I have no good way of measuring this diagonal. So instead, I want to do vertical and horizontal lines to figure out where things go. For me, I'm going to try to find this point. Where should that point go? It used to be about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 over. So I should now scale that gap out 
If I go 6 times 2 over 3, I'm going to find that it's actually now 4 over. So I'm trying to place this point right here. This big red dot that I'm going to draw. It was 6 and then 3 up. 6 to the right, 3 up. If I scale it, now it's 4 to the right, and then it'll be 2 up. So I'm scaling the gaps to get me to that point. The next point is this one over here. If I wanted to find that point, I could just figure the gap between the points and scale that. So if I look, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 over in between those two points. 6 times 2 over 3 is now 4. So that becomes only 4 points over. And now I have my two points. Only do horizontal and vertical distances. Don't try to measure the length of diagonals. It's not going to work for you. Then you can connect dots to create your diagonals. So I've got the bottom half of my shape. If you want to do the top of your shape, again, I'm going to look for points. So like this spot up here, I'm doing an orange. I might want to see how far away that is from here. And then scale it. So if it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 times 2 over 3 is 4. That means my new gap should only be 4 high. 1, 2, 3, 4, it should be right there. And I can do the other side as well to make it look like this across the top. Yeah, you just basically copy it. That's what I do. And then again, you connect the dots. Like that. And now I've scaled this to become two thirds of the original shape. Because my quality is so crummy, um, you can try the next one on your own because I can't really show it anyway. Um, and if you want, you can move on to the practice problems. If you get a percentage as a scale factor, you have to divide by 100% to turn it into a scale. 400% would be four. Yeah. If they do a third, you divide. <coughs> Yeah, yep. that'll work. Try to finish that by the end of class. You guys got about 10 minutes left. I'll wander around and help you out. Yes, sir. Okay.